They might not be the most powerful people in the White House, but I think we can all agree they are definitely the cutest. Jennifer Pickens is the author of a new book titled Pets at the White House, and she joins us this morning with a closer look. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning to you. This is actually your second book. It is. Kind yes, of my focusing around the White House. It is. My first book was Christmas at the White House, and um, before we even finished Christmas at the White House, I couldn't help but already have the second one in mind, Pets at the White House. This is so, so great. So I think it's really, I loved, we're going through all the research and finding a lot of pictures during Christmas, especially during the Bush years with Barney and Miss Beasley, mm -hmm. and we just were falling in love with all those images and had to have a second book. I love the photos in this book, okay. too. Let's get it started with you telling us a great story about the Kennedys oh, in particular. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Kennedys are so iconic for our country, and they just had the, one of the largest menagerie of pets at the White House ever. Everything from ducks to hamsters, <laughs> guinea pigs, macaroni, the pony, but probably one of the great stories that a lot of us don't know is about Pushnika. And Pushnika. she was a gift from the Soviet premier, um, Khrushchev, to Caroline following the Cuban Missile Crisis. And, but before became, um, Caroline could take her back to the White House and enjoy her, that dog had to be sent to Walter Reed Medical Facility to make sure she didn't have any bombs, germs, or listening devices. Seriously? <laughs> to the first daughter, yes. So wow, what kind of dog of was fun. that? She was um, the daughter of Strelka, so she was the daughter of the first dog sent into space. And her name, Pushnika, means fluffy in Russian. That's very interesting. I was yeah. going to ask you next, what story really stands out in this book? Is that the so, one or the more? One, there's many from each administration. Um, another favorite one was some of the images you might see is of Liberty. That was Gerald Ford's um, dog, Aww, a golden retriever who is so sweet. And she ended up having puppies while she was at the White House. And one morning um, in the middle of the night, about 3 a.m., she came and woke up President Ford a few days before she gave birth, needing to go be let outside. And so being such a good um, pet owner that the president was, he took her out onto the South Lawn to do her business. And when it came time to get back inside, the president could, out, could get out, but he couldn't get back in. <laughs> so he and Liberty had to make their way up the stairwell of the White House, all the way back upstairs, still locked. Um, and here's this odd couple locked out of the White House in the wee hours in the middle of the night, as Mrs. Yeah. Ford will tell us. And, says she's never understood how the Secret Service was missing this odd couple outside when they, you know, barely miss anything that moves. I wonder how often the president gets exactly. locked out of the White so House, about right? the time they make it back downstairs, they figured it out and let them in. I love those puppy pictures, too. So, and they're can, absolutely. Who can resist one yes. of those? All right, well, I know that um, former First Lady Barbara Bush wrote the foreword in she this did. book. She did. What did we Which, really learn about Millie? Oh, I mean, you can learn so much about Millie. She's probably one of the most famous White House yes. pets of all times, and Barbara Bush is such a wonderful and um, person to have written this forward and, and such a great first lady but one of the fun stories I think about Millie and her puppies was President Bush was known as being such a punctual man um, as president never late for anything except for when the puppies were at the White House he was a little famous for not minding taking a few extra minutes out of the schedule to go out in the South Lawn and see the puppies who wouldn't all right well of course here in North Texas we all know how close President George W Bush is to his dog Mr. Barney. Yes, absolutely. Barney and Miss Beasley and Spot, the late Spot, are all famous White House pets. Mrs. Bush really used them as a tool to open up the White House to so many people with the Barney can, which I think you're getting to watch right now, <laughs> Love that. was such a great idea of Mrs. Bush's. But um, one of the funniest stories I think of the book is certainly during the day of the um, pardoning of the turkey right before Thanksgiving. Oh no. Um, in, President Bush was in the middle of an FBI briefing and Dale Haney, the White House horticulturist, also known as the dog handler, was out that day as was some of the other presidential staff. And when the Turkey Federation people arrived, even though the dogs started going wild with the turkey, they didn't really, you know, take the time to figure out the dogs were loose in the Rose Garden. They went ahead and let Flyer the turkey out that day. Oh, no. And feathers were flying everywhere. The dogs were going ballistic. And the president had to burst out of the Oval Office to save the turkey twice that day. Did so he save the turkey? He saved the turkey. The he <laughs> saved the turkey ultimately in the end. Oh, look at Barney go. He, he is adorable. The, he is. Was he the only one with the dog cam? Um, he was. He was yeah. the first one. That, it was truly a Bush um, idea. So to use the doggy I, the Barney cam it. as it's called all right well now what about our current first family the Obamas is Bo mentioned in this oh, book oh of course well? you can't do a book on White House pets and not include Bo who's so famous yes. for eating tomatoes and other things but um, the story I love most about President Obama certainly is that um, on the day of his historic election night he announced to the world that Sasha and Malia did earn their um, puppy to take with them to the White House and just to see America and the papers go wild and crazy over what kind of dog the Obamas would get for um, the first daughters. Right before his inauguration, he said in an interview with George Stephanopoulos that it had been, you know, harder than securing a commerce secretary was picking out the White House pet 
but they had narrowed it down to two, a Labradoodle and a Portuguese water dog. Mm -hmm. And in the end, we can yep. see the Portuguese water dog did win out. One in the end. end. They're all yes. great stories and phenomenal Thank pictures, as Thank I mentioned you. before, too. Thanks so much for coming Thank on. Thank you GMT so much for having me. All right, and okay. by the way, Jennifer will be doing a book signing in Dallas on Thursday from 4 to 6 at Collector's Covey on Lover's Lane.